I, I think probably it all changed, um, certainly in the Premier League, when Pep came in and tried to bring a new goalkeeper to Man City, got rid of Joe Hart. I think it was Bravo that when it didn't quite work, then he went out and Edison came in. And all of a sudden it was this goalkeeper that's good with his feet as well as being a great shot stopper. That's where the game is now, right? You can't get away from it. Would you agree with that? No. I think you can still be a really top quality goalkeeper and not be good with your feet and still make a hell of a living and have a great career and win trophies. I think it's beneficial to be great with your feet, but primarily if you're not a good enough goalkeeper, you will not make a goalkeeper in professional football, Premier League football, Championship football. Professional, I'd say, actually, mm. if you're not fundamentally a good goalkeeper. Fundamentals of goalkeeping is making saves, coming for crosses, talking well, communicating, being a leader, all those things, organising. The the brilliant, the brilliant footballers, if you like, who play in goal and have the other qualities become exceptional, become mm. really hot property because so many fo football teams now want to play the way Pep, Pep plays. Mm. She's out you, from the back. You've seen Unana play, right? Because you, yeah. you and I were talking, you think yeah. he's a great, not just a great goalkeeper, but a really, really good player with his feet. Really comfortable. He's meant to be like a really good defensive midfielder anyway. Yeah, he, he looks really comfortable. How, how, how much of a difference do you think that is? For a club like Man United that are trying to get top four and obviously they're trying to go massive. to the next level. I think it's become, massive. Do you really make yeah. that much of a difference? I think it's massive in the way that when you watch City and there's a really good press on them yeah. from a good side, he is so comfortable missing out the first press with a lovely little ping out wide to a fullback or a wide man who's dropped or a fullback who's pushed on or playing through the lines to someone's feet, a 40-yard whip ball that you normally expect the central midfielder or a centre-back to play. You know that 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 ball whip it through like two players really quick into somebody's feet so he can be on the turn and at you. Because United's got because so, United have got so many good technical players who are good spatial spatial awareness. People like Fernandez, people like Mount now in the Casemiro. If you're if you've got a press on Man U and De Gea's got the ball at his feet, you know he's not going to play little clever passes through into them boys. Mm. So you don't have to worry about them as much. You can go really go after the press. No, he's got to kick it long. Whereas if you've got a goalkeeper who's got the capability, so it's not just the technical ability to, to, to make a pass. It's seeing the pass as well. That's why Edison's the best. Mm. Alisson's not far behind. Do you, but can I ask, do you, do you, here's an interesting question. Do, if you're the team, if you're setting up your team up against the opposition and you know they've got a goalkeeper capable of putting 60, 70 yard passes together. Mm. Do you set up differently? Is your game plan for that match different? Do you do you press less because you know you are more vulnerable if you create yeah. more room at the back? Yeah, you would press less. If you're playing teams with a really good goalkeeper who's good on it, you would, pr you would press less. Absolutely. You would make a point. It would be more actually a case of saying we're going to press more because he's not very good with the ball. Yeah. Um, so, so with that in mind, do you expect other teams to set up differently against Manchester or play differently against Man United next season if Unana does come, rather than how they would against? Because there were times. I mean, the one that jumps off of the page for me is, is at West Ham. Uh, well, it, the, do you remember that the, he had a nightmare day, David Haya, right? I just wonder if teams... Seville, will... Brentford, the he had lots on. of bad games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But do, you, do you think teams will set up and go for games differently now because they know that United, you can't do that with United? I think a lot of teams who like playing on the front foot will still have a press. But what they'll do is they'll get bored more quickly and they'll go, oh, whoa, we've had a go and they keep playing through us mm. and we're going to get battered. Because United have got great pace... Whoever they shine as a nine is going to add qualities. They've got Rashford's pace. They've got, play, you know, um, the lad on the wing. Anthony. Anthony. Ganacho. So if you've got someone, if you Sancho. if you stuck Allison or Edison in the United's team and all of a sudden you're going to go after go after him and you pop it into Varane or you pop it into Martinez who's comfortable on the ball, really comfortable, mm. pops it back to the keeper who then goes, bam, 70 yard over the fullback for Anthony, all of a sudden you are a real force. You're, you're not going after them. You might, if Liverpool will go after them, because they'll say, go on then. They play with the highlight anyway, yeah. Well, and, and, they, and they, they fancy themselves one-on-one -on -one defensively. You know, you've got play. City will go after anyone, because they think, well, you, no one's going to be, you, you're not going to be able to cope with our press. And, and actually, if you do get out, we've got defenders who can cope. Who's going to run Kyle Walker? No one. So let your keeper hit it over his head. Do, do you think it makes a difference to defenders? Because there was a few times throughout the season. Absolutely, million percent. When David De Gea would put, I, I remember one game, I think it was in, in Europe, where he put Harry Maguire under a horrific 
Correct. Pressure. The best central defender, the best footballing centre halves need a keeper who's on their wavelength because it makes life easy for them. Then it becomes three centre halves. You're not playing two centre halves from Migoli, and every time you're giving him going, oh, oh. The goalkeeper shouldn't be making bad, give, stitching you up, never. Yeah, yeah. Yes, when, you know, a little bit of pressure, as in someone's 10 yards away, you time to turn and ne- make your next pass. But that two centre halves of Martinez and Varane, when he's fit, their main two, then becomes a three. So whichever one's on the ball, you're equally troubled. Mm. Uh, okay, if you were to list the top attributes in order then of a modern day goalkeeper now, what would they be? What would be number one most important thing for a goalkeeper? Making saves. Okay, and then what? It depends. It depends, but mine would be crosses. Okay, so so distribution then, is third on your list. Yeah. Is it really? And then probably leadership, bravery. I think you can learn. I think you can learn to be a bit more vocal and organised. Okay. I don't know if you're old school or not. I'm certainly old school, right? Who would you say is the best goalkeeper in the Premier League with their feet? Is it either Edison or Allison, right? Edison's got the edge. Josh. Okay, but Allison's brilliant. Either right? of those two, right? Yeah. For the sake of the argument, who would you rather have, Peter Schmeichel, as he was then, right, or one of those two? If you're, if it was your team, Dan. Um. God, that's a tough one. I, I, Schmeichel was incredible yeah as a presence and a leader and a powerful goalkeeper you just won on your side I, I've said I've done shows before and I've always chosen Schmeichel mm. so I won't change ok you um, you would have played with Van der Sar against against who was your yeah. goalkeeper when you were at Fulham Schwarzer oh, ok so you, okay. now talk about Mark Schwarzer talk about a goalkeeper who has every attribute that you, you should need to be one of the best. Apart from his kicking, wasn't great. Struggled with it a little bit. You know, his distribution yeah. and his technique. If he'd have had that, he'd have been... Okay, so in training, are yeah. they just doing goalkeepy stuff? They're not doing distribution, they're not doing... They did more as time went by. Right. But there's only so good you can get at something if you haven't got that technique. You know, you can practice something and practice something. Some things are just a gift of the way you built. Beckham yeah. whipping free kicks the way he did. He's had that, you know, that 10 to 2 or even quarter to... Quarter past nine. <laughs> He's got. Do you know what I mean by his yeah, feet, his posture, the ability to whip the ball like he did was partly to do with his his posture and the way he's built. Mm-hmm. Not not just because he's practicing it every day. Practice helps, of course, but some things you can just do. You can see. Did you see the change then as you were coming through, as you were getting older, from when you first got into football and what goalkeepers were training? And yeah. later on, <coughs> the more involvement with goalkeepers on on sort of like outfield stuff. A lot more, yeah. A lot more of so it. So who's the best goalkeeper you played with? Who's your goalkeeper at Liverpool? Schwarzer was the best. Was he? Who's your keepers at Liverpool? Dudek was the main one. All right. Okay. Brilliant keeper. But Mark Schwarzer was the best. I'd have to have Schwartz, yeah. yeah. If I was if I was going to my, if I was yeah, I mean I'd be happy with Dudek, don't get me wrong, love him to bits, but I'd choose Schwartz. Okay. Um we're gonna um, we're gonna talk more on this. It's fascinating stuff. We're gonna talk more on this um when we come back. I'd love to hear from you, the football fan. So you've picked Schmeichel as as a keeper, you would have over over Edison or Allison. Now, I agree with you, but I don't know if that's because we're old school. I think a little bit old school, but I also think as well, if it depends, there's two things you're talking about. A keeper for your team for the whole season, and if you're going to play out from the back constantly, you yeah. would probably have to go a different way. But I I wouldn't overplay like that anyway, personally. So Schmeichel, I don't, I can't look past him. Okay, uh, we're going to talk about this in about ten minutes' time. We'll talk about uh, Lee Carsley in just a moment. But we, I really want to hear from you oh, about and, goalkeepers. And Go somebody's just put on here, so I won't take credit for it. Yeah, Schmeichel's distribution with his throws was ridiculous. Into Nobody's the... ever done that. No, like that. Uh, Not quite like him. No, there was... I say no. Brucey used to. Brucey Grobler used to love a long throw, but maybe you're right. It was to feet. It, it was, was unbelievable. Schmeichel. Yeah, it was incredible. It was incredible. Yeah. Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.